Hey, welcome back to the shop. This time we'll be looking at some kitchen cabinet doors to replace some really dated doors that we have in our kitchen that was built in the late 80s. So I'm going to bring you along with me as I build some more of these. I have about 21 total I have to make and I'm going to pass along some information that was really helpful to me, especially using Jay Bates' plan on from his website, Jay's Custom Creations. I'll put a link in the description. So here's what the plans look like from Jay Bates' website. I'm not going to show you the entire plans and the formulas because I'd like you to go to his website and, and check that out because he put that on there. But I just wanted to show you what it looked like. And he bases it off of the X and Y dimensions, the openings that are in your, your cabinets. Now he did his for a vanity, but I just applied it to the kitchen cabinets. Next, something that's really essential, I think, is to come up with a diagram. And I just did a rough sketch. I didn't have to make it fancy and put it in the computer or anything, but I just did a sketch of the cabinets that I needed to do in the kitchen and their different locations. And then I could have a kind of a check off list of what I had done and what I still had to work on. And I made some notes to myself of the sizes I needed for each piece. So for this diagram, I not only have the size of the pieces I need for the rails and styles for each one, but I also have the size of the piece of plywood that I'm gonna be using here. And I'm using quarter inch plywood, hardwood plywood, that is a, a finished grade plywood. Finally, the last thing I wanna share with you is a, a good program I used online that helped me figure out how to make the cuts and use the boards in the best way possible. And I use this basically for the rails and styles. And so I put in all the lengths that I needed in this program. And what it does for you is it gives you, based on these are based on eight foot lengths, it gives me a cut list for each piece. And that was really helpful in making sure I didn't have uh, a lot of waste. You can find that at this website right here. I'll put a link in the description. Here's my test piece for reference. So you can see here that I had a really nice tight test fit with these pieces. And this gives me the, the tenon width that I need and also the groove that I like that fit just snugly with the plywood. For the groove width, what I found is for my table saw blade that this groove is a little wider than two widths of the blade. So that means that I had to run it through twice and then even a third and fourth time. So what I'm gonna to do to eliminate that is, I know that this is the width I want. So I'm gonna make sure that I line it up so the blade is at the very edge of this side over here. So once that's lined up, that'll be my first cut and then I can flip it over and make the second cut. And when I do that, I'll have probably a tiny little piece in the middle that I'll have to take out. So here's the seven doors I finished so far. So for these doors, I was able to get boards that were pretty straight. And when I went back to Lowe's, my local Lowe's was out of these one by threes because I picked through all the, the nice straight ones. So what I'm gonna have to use is I'm gonna have to use a one by six and cut it down. So I have one by sixes here. These are 10 foot long. And these were the two straightest pieces I could find. And they were very clear without knots. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut these down to size first that'll make it easier to rip instead of trying to rip a 10 foot long piece.
behind me here you can see the panels I have already cut out for the inside of the cabinet doors and I'm using quarter inch plywood which actually measures about 3 16 of an inch and this stuff is not cheap it's it's nice and finished on both sides though and it's about $50 a sheet at Lowe's. When you cut out these panels you want to make sure that when you cut them out they're a little bit undersized for the frame for each cabinet door. That gives you a little room for expansion and contraction of that outside frame and also makes it for an easier install when you try to put the sides on. For the panels I pretty much had them rough cut. I have some of them cut out to the exact dimensions and some aren't. I didn't write on them or anything like that. I'm trying to keep sanding to a minimum. It's not too hard to keep track of them however. I'm just um, checking off as I go which ones I have and I know that this one for example is 5 and 7 eighths and I need to get it down to 18 and 7 eighths so I'm going to make a mark and I'm going to cut them on the cross cut sled here. Okay, so we're not going to look into the camera. We're going to pretend like the camera's not there. Okay? Right. All right, you ready to help me glue? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that we don't, we like how it fits just like this, right? It didn't fit pretty perfectly. So we're gonna make sure that we keep track of where these are. We're only gonna glue, these things are called the tongues. Like a tongue sticking out, and they fit in the groove. So we're only gonna glue the tongues. Okay, so I have some glue here. And you only need to put a little bit, that's, like that's kind of a lot. So, like that? Yeah, that's perfect. So let's do, just glue that, just spread some glue on that part. And you want to try not to get on the outside, just on the inside. Yep. dry for a while, okay? Mm -hmm. Good now job. Can I make you food? Now you can make me food. What do you want to eat? How about your special corn broccoli pie or whatever you made me? Strawberry. Corn broccoli strawberry pie, pie or something? It's gonna taste.